Today, I will show you how I install a solar panel on the roof of my Toyota Sienna minivan. The purpose of this build is to use a solar panel to charge a battery pack so that I can convert the power into 120 volt AC using an inverter. And from 120 volt AC, I can run any electrical devices just like I'm at home while traveling or camping. This is like a mini off-grid solar power battery system. The only difference is that it's on a moving car instead of a house. My main goal for this build is to install a solar panel on the roof of my van in a way that, number one, it is low profile and stealthy so that it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb and attract thieves. Number two, because it's low profile, it's also aerodynamically streamlined that way it feels efficient and doesn't cost me extra for fuel. Number three, and because it's a low profile, wind noise will also be reduced when I travel at highway speed. And number four, I want to install the solar panel in a way that I do not have to drill holes on my van. It will be mounted on the existing track on the top of my roof. The wires will be run through the door so no holes will be drilled. And number five, because no holes will be drilled, the solar panel is not going to be permanently on the roof. I can remove the solar panel if I want to, or I can change a different higher wattage solar panel later on easily if I want to. So first let's talk about the solar panel I'm going to use for this project. It's a solar world 250 watt polycrystalline solar panel. This is a standard 60 cell solar panel you can find on the rooftop of any house that has a solar panel installed. The open circuit voltage is 37 volts and under load is about 30 volts. The reason why I choose this solar panel is because I'm going to use a Nissan Leaf battery pack at 40 volts DC and a boost converter to charge the battery. The solar panel voltage has to be lower than my battery voltage. To mount the solar panel on the roof rack, I already removed the rear crossbar as you saw in my last video. I keep the front crossbar as this will provide structural support for the rack. I will also use the front crossbar to install a wind blocker to dampen the wind noise when I drive at highway speed. I'll show you that later on in the video. Now with the rear crossbar removed, the solar panel sits perfectly inside the frame of the rack. This will give the solar panel a low profile which has many advantages I've talked about earlier. So here are the hardware that's necessary for me to install the solar panel on the roof of the van. We got four aluminum brackets. These are high quality, very thick aluminum brackets that I salvaged from my previous uninstall of a solar system. So there's a lot of parts in here. One side of the bracket is going to go to the solar panel and the other side is going to go to the rack of the van. I got four square metal thingy. I'm not sure what this is called, but a salvage from an IKEA furniture. You can see on one side it's got a hex space for a hex nut. So this is where I put the hex nut in. So the bolt is going to drop in like so. And it will be flush with the surface of this piece of metal. And this whole thing is going to slide onto the rack of the van. And then with this bolt, I'm going to secure it onto the bracket and it is going to hold everything in place. Because this is installed on a car, so there's a lot of vibration. So I'm using lock nuts and lock washers to make sure that everything is tight and doesn't get loose. Alright, let me show you what I've got so far. I installed four L bracket on the solar panel on four corners and this is what it looks like on the solar panel I made an extension cable about 8 feet long and this connector is going to connect to the original connector of the solar panel so the extension cable goes from the underside of the solar panel down toward the back of the car and then it goes down through the door and then it goes down through the hole here which is a rear light that I just removed so I didn't have to drill any hole at all so here you can see I put the rear light back on and it looks just fine it doesn't pinch on the wire at all and I can close the door just fine there's no pinching on the wire just like that so here we go I think I'm done 
is bolted tight on all four corners. I got the solar panel mounted onto the aluminum L bracket and then this bolt here goes from the inside of the rail out and secure the L bracket. I got rubber shim on the side and also on the bottom to absorb all the vibration. So the power cable goes from the solar panel down through the door and then through the rear light assembly into this compartment here and out this way and I didn't even have to drill any hole at all now let's check on the voltage of the solar panel we got 29.2 volts open circuits and the car is in the shade so it works great so on this compartment here I can close the lid just fine and the wire doesn't interfere with the lid at all so this is how it looks from the front you can see there's a gap between the solar panel and the top of the roof and that creates a lot of wind noise when the car is running at high speed so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of foam and put it underneath the front crossbar that way I can block the wind from entering the gap between the solar panel and the top of the roof so this piece of foam is the insulation on top of the water heater you can also use this from a 99 cent store it's called cool noodle for swimming but they don't have it in black so here's the plan I'm going to use part of a measuring tape and put it right in the core of the piece of foam because it's hollow inside so this will act as a support for the foam so here it is it is finished I mounted the tape on the original screws of the crossbar and I did the same for the other side now it's very tight and it is not gonna go anywhere this is how it looks like from the front you can see it's blocking all the uh, air that goes under the panel I'm gonna paint this black so that it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb So this is my final thought about this build, it's more like a little review of my own build. We take it for a camping trip to Yosemite. The trip is over 1000 miles and the solar panel holds on just fine. On some part of the freeway I drive up to 80 miles per hour and the panel is still holding on tight. One thing I notice is that when the car is parked and not moving, I only get about 150 watts of power coming from the solar panel. But when the car is moving, especially at highway speed, I get about 180 watts. That's about 20% more power coming from the solar panel. That's because at highway speed, the solar panel is cooled down significantly by the wind going past the top and the bottom of it. At the campsite, it's quite shady. That's good for us, but not good for the solar panel. Shading is the number one enemy of a solar panel. I only get about 10 watts in the shades, even though it's a 250 watt solar panel. So I have to move the car around to get the maximum power coming from the solar panel. Overall, this solar panel works great for what we're using. I have enough power to charge cell phones, camera batteries, walkie-talkie batteries, all kinds of batteries. We have enough power to turn on the lights at night and even cook some food. On average, I get about 1 kilowatt hour of power per day coming from the solar panel. If I park the car the whole day in the sun with no shading. Here are the batteries I'm going to use for this project. You can hear the fan running because I'm charging it right now. I'm getting it ready for this project. Here is the charge controller I'm going to use for this project. And this is the inverter. It's actually a UPS power supply. 
that uh, had a bad battery. That's it for now folks. Next time I'll show you how I put all of these together and put them in the back of my van. Until then, thanks for watching.